the project I'm working on is my retirement project. Um, I got bored mowing the grass, etc., etc., etc. All the things that families get you to do, and decided to write a landscape archaeology book covering Little Over, which is a parish in Derby, um, where I used to live for 20 odd years. Ended up deciding, well, seven and a half mile radius around a fixed point in Little Over, that's a nice range to do. You could walk there and back in a day. I could if I was fit, I will be soon. Um, using QGIS and it's starting off oh, about 10,000 BC was the aim and finishing at the Doomsday Book 1087. Reason for not doing the more conventional parish history is someone's already done one. Um, and I didn't really want to do one of those anyway. So the first thing that I picked up um, as a find in the area was a hand axe, dated roughly 300 to 500,000 BC. Oh, I'm covering a lot further back then. Oops, wrong one. I, my data sources are Derbyshire's what's called historic environment record. County councils are required now to put that available online. Most of them have. The data quality is interesting, but then you have to realise that the whole historic environment process was originally kicked off by an 1888 Act of Parliament. So there's been lots of people entering data using word, similar words to mean not quite the same thing. That's been fun. 1,200-page um, PDF of data, three shape files. <coughs> I've also been able to get hold of um, British Museum's Portable Antiquities Scheme data, which is what the metal detectorists find and report. I've been allowed to do this because I'm not making any money out of this. The book, when it's published, is sponsored by a local history group who very kindly pay some of my expenses. I make nothing, therefore I don't get charged for things and other sources. Anything and everything that's connected to the internet. That's the software I'm using. Um, QGIS, Zotero, Blender maybe. I don't know if I feel that adventurous to do proper 3D stuff, but hey-ho. Um, I have used Inkscape, GIMP, and the, uh, the two open source Office alikes. I'm sorry, we as a family have the Microsoft Office pack and I'm using a Mac so I get the Apple products for free. Um, Scrivener is a writing project management tool. It's not a book, it's a book writing tool. It's not a writing, it's not a word processor. Um, Affinity, it's quite cheap. It pops up every two or three years when they do a major upgrade and they do a bundled deal, so I buy that instead of Adobe. Um, and it's a Mac. Colour Brewer, if like me you have the inability to pick decent colours that go together, um, is really helpful for picking colours that go together. That's the area of study, seven and a half miles round Little Over, well the church, primary church in Little Over, um, it's quite a big area and when I decided on that I didn't realise what I was getting into properly um, but it is a worthwhile exercise and it's very interesting and I can tell a proper story because of all the work that's been done in the Trent Valley. Getting hold of data files can be quite tricky. I'm not affiliated with the university, so I don't have an academic account. I am very careful, therefore, about making sure I reference things that I use, because otherwise people will get grumpy. <laughs> Rightly so. That's my headache map. That's all of the finds 
um, spots, many of which overlap on top of the other because often you find you've got Paleolithic, Mesolithic, blah de blah de blah, Saxon. <laughs> oh dear. There'll be one of those maps for each era. Roman is one era, Iron Age is another, etc., etc. And because I'm taking a landscape approach, I'm also having to um, take out the fine spots. Someone found a Roman coin there, that's not going to appear on the landscape. But what will appear on the landscape is anything that's a modern crop mark. And I'm, as I said, I'm really glad that people have done lots of mapping, finding all the crop marks in the Trent Valley. Um, I use the same symbology for three different data sets because it's otherwise people looking at this, and including me, would not have a clue. Um, Roman roads, uh, little over the red bit, and these bits are mainly quarries now. <sighs> they were quarries, and they're now. Um, nature parks or reserves or whatever. Because I've got a map of the parishes, I've been able to bang and get QGIS to map all the parishes for me. There's 132 of them. Some of them, breathing on the hill, there's a little squitty couple of metres couple of hundred metres. Um, most of the rest, there's about somewhere between 80 and 110 parishes because not all of these parishes existed back at doomsday time. Um, anything that's got an abbey in it that didn't exist back when doomsday was happening, mostly. Uh, those colours are from Calibra. I, I don't claim any, um, but because I'm going back half a million years, because that's the possible age of the little hand axes, I've had to get my head around the glaciers that have happened in that time scale, and those are the ones that more or less trampled <laughs> over the area I'm studying. Um, and I say in the reference there, kind, kind permission of, um, I dropped an email to the lead researcher and said, pretty please, can I have a copy of your shape files? And within a day I had them. So that was very nice of them, thank you very much. Um, that's the oldest one, the nice with the nice curly edges. And the more modern the glacier, the more jagged the edges. But that's not all the ice ages that have happened in the half million years. There's been a lot more, but the glaciers didn't come down this far. They stayed up in Scotland or didn't come out of Scandinavia, depending on what was going on. And just occasionally, the people who've written these papers have done such a good job that it's absolutely a waste of time to say, can I have a copy of your shape files? Because <laughs> they stand on their own. So that one is Doggerland. Land, that's the land that was there before the sea level rose as the glaciers all melted and it's been there for at least a million years, apart from two gaps. One gap we know about because we're alive in it, the other one um, about 300,000 years ago-ish, maybe. Um, the one on the right is a modern map, but the reason I've included in it is you see these striations there where the rock was churned away by 
the volume of water going through. Um, and I hadn't appreciated, as a land lover, how shallow bits of the North Sea are. Red is five metres, so it's, it's quite shallow. Oops, wrong computer. And some original research. This is taken from around the time of Doomsday, and I've gone through working out the derivation of the place names. So example is Derby, well that, that was Derby. <laughs> um, wooded place of the deer settlement, BYS settlement. Uh, that's an old Norse name. So the Viking Great Army came down the Trent, landed at Repton, because that was a very rich place that they wanted to plunder, and did so. <laughs> and there's lots of interesting archaeology along the Trent, playing hunt where the Viking Great Army um, encamped in 876, 877 I think it is. Uh, so if you've seen Vikings or the Lost Kingdom, it's that sort of world we're talking about. People turning up and saying, give me food, give me money. No, okay, whack. Anything with red on it is an Old Norse derived term. Anything without it is an Old English derived term. So the place main names tell you roughly in the 8th, 9th, 10th century when the parishes were settling and some of the settlements were being made, um, what, what their history was. So for example, Little Over, Little Over, Little Slope, Little Ridge. Next door is Little Over, Big Slope, Big Ridge. Old English word, Mikel, M-I-C-E-L. You've got all sorts of other ones, but that pair around there, um, there's one there called Normanton. Um, Normanton is settlement of the Norwegians. So it's an old English place name recording the fact that the Norwegians settled next door. Conversely, the other way around, you've got Fulmark, which is full Old Norse. That must be a better term. Um, it means ancient defensive earthworks. So that's probably one of the places where the Vikings put their ships when they took Repton, which is just down the road. So uh, you've conversely got a parish called Ingleby, which is just next door, which is um, settlement of the English. But it's in not, but it's in not old Norse name. <laughs> so you've got these funny things, and they've been really, really careful. The people back then to use the phrase "settlement of the Danes," "settlement of the Norwegians." They never use the word "Viking" because Viking is a cultural construct. <laughs> it isn't what the people call themselves. You went a Viking. You didn't. You weren't. Were you weren't one sort of organised hooliganism on a grand scale. Um, and you can see that there's a fair number of bits of red. B-Y, Brett B. No, I'm sorry, I can't remember 90 or name derivations. The brain doesn't work that well. Um, why? That's quite a long way out. But you can see trends. This part of England, was in what was called Dane law. Yes, there are maps of that. <laughs> it, was right, it was run by the Vikings. It was not part of England during that period. Um, plus I got sidetracked. 
Uh, I was playing around with contours and things and suddenly realised, oh, uh, I'm sorry this is a lousy photograph, um, I could do a contour map. Oh, if I've got a contour map, does that mean that I can do a 3D contour map with a laser cutter? Oh yeah, that's a nice toy to play with. I'll do that. So I did. Um, there are loads and loads of examples online of how to do that. If anyone is seriously interested, talk to me. I can also tell you some of my mistakes. It was for an exhibition. Um, and this is my YOY list. It probably tells you something about the way my memory doesn't work. Grip, National Grid References and me are sort of working, but not well. Um, I can never understand the difference between a DEM, a DSM and a DTM. I've seen a wonderful diagram and I meant to find it and put it up, but I failed. Sorry on that. Um, because I'm outside the academic circle, I haven't got access, I haven't got a university account. I can't go online and download the other 90%, 80% of papers. It's not really hindering me, but it's one of those, it would be nice if. And they put USA, Air Forces Europe, aerial photos up last year as a spin-off project is a local history group is trying to map the parish boundary in detail back in 1850 because that's before Derby started expanding and we would like to know and then we can go on walkies and ground truth whether that line which looks like a line of trees is actually a line of trees. Oh, and it's where the original boundary was. So it's been in the landscape a long time. Um, I haven't got a server. I haven't got a programming team. I have YouTube and me. So um, if anyone knows of a way of having a catalog file with all the layers and all the project files in and being able to see which one's used where. Tell me. Um, there's a software query, there's a weirdy in the package of data that I got. You can, I've plotted them, they work perfectly, I just cannot physically see the data. It's some bizarre um, standards thing and it's a version of some package other than QGIS that doesn't display them. Next ones are incredibly useful and I've still got a lot of learning to do.